Okay. All right, you got me. Peak performance. Yet, they delivered on that, I think. I think it's safe to say that we have just experienced an absolute banger of an Apple event. And guess what? I uh, I don't want to brag, but I think I was pretty darn close with the leaks that I talked about yesterday. So today what we're going to focus on is the new M1 Ultra chip. We're going to be diving into the performance charts that Apple brought up, discussing the value and the performance of this thing. And of course, we're going to be talking about the way that it's implemented in the Mac Studio that I leaked just yesterday. So you guys, I spent $10,000 today. Please, please get subscribed, turn on notifications and like this video. A ton of coverage is going to be coming your way and you're not going to want to miss it. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so where do I start this video other than a little tiny bit of a victory lap? I'm sorry, I had a big leak video yesterday and there were a lot of doubters. Everyone was saying alleged or, oh, this guy's a clown or people were saying they're gonna eat their shoes if Apple shipped a Mac Studio that looked like what I showed you yesterday. Well, I mean, if you want, I can ship you some utensils. Here's the shade of green for the iPhone that I predicted and here's the real one. Here's the purple iPad that I predicted, and here's the real one. Here's the studio display that I predicted, and here's the real one. There were only two little details that needed to be changed a little bit on the Mac Studio. So the first one was the top piece. My information said that it was glass or polycarbonate. That was not the same, but we did get the black Apple logo correct. And then the vent design on the bottom is slightly different, but apart from that, I got the dimensions right. I said it was about four inches tall. This was a pretty successful leak. So yeah, there's my victory lap. Now let's start talking about this M1 Ultra chip. This is a new chip that, to be honest, a number of us saw coming, but I don't know that we actually thought it was going to happen today and that you'd be able to order it and get it this month. But that's where we are. M1 Ultra is essentially two M1 Max chips glued together. And my goodness, does that give us quite a bit of power. We're talking about 20 CPU cores, 16 of which are high performance cores. We're talking about up to 64 GPU cores, 128 gigabytes of unified memory and eight terabytes of storage. That is absolutely insane. It is an absolute monster. I mean, look at it next to the other chips. The thing is massive. Now, as usual, Apple gave us some rather dubious performance charts. So I think now would be a good time to go through them. So when Apple was talking about the M1 Ultra, they also compared the M1 Max, and I think that gives us a little bit of insight. For example, the first chart that came up was this GPU performance versus power, where they claimed that the M1 Max is as powerful as a 10-core PC desktop with 65% less power. Now, you might be wondering, why are they talking about the M1 Max performance? Again, we've already had this chip. Well, before it was in a laptop, so they were comparing it to laptops. Now it's in a desktop, so it has to compete with desktop processors. In this case, a Core i5-12600K. Now that is a little bit interesting because the numbers for both of those processors already exist and they simply don't tell the same tale. If you look at Citibench R23, the Core i5-12600K scores 40% higher than the M1 Max. So, I don't know what benchmark Apple is using here, but we're gonna take this with a grain of salt and we're gonna apply that difference when we talk about the M1 Ultra because they basically said that it's more powerful than a Core i9-12900K and that it has the same performance as that chip with 100 watts less power. Interesting, interesting. Now this claim would imply that Apple's scaling is simply phenomenal. 
Now, when you're combining two chips together, there's not necessarily a guarantee that you're gonna be able to do that perfectly. As Apple talked about in the keynote, in the old way, which they used to do on the Cheese Grater Mac Pro, where they would have two CPUs, when those things were linked together, you lost a lot of performance with that bridge. So they have this new unspecified technology that allows them to fuse together with supposedly, I guess, next to zero compromise. So does that claim actually add up? Well, they say that they have a chip that looks to be 20 or 30% more powerful than a Core i9-12900K. But as we know from Geekbench scores with the M1 Max, uh, that's a little bit doubtful. Now, we don't know whether the M1 Max is gonna be more powerful in the Mac Studio than it is in the MacBook Pro, but I'd like to be pleasantly surprised, so let's assume that it isn't. And let's go ahead and subtract 40% off the M1 Ultra when comparing it to the 12900K. So if Apple says it's about 30% more powerful, we're gonna say it's about 10% less powerful. And if we go ahead and look at the Cinebench R23 scores, we see that the 12900K gets about 27,472 in the multi-core test. But then let's take 10% off of that as a penalty for Apple using these stupid, silly little graphs and exaggerating their numbers. So we can call that roughly 24,724. And folks, that is within like a hundred points of double the score of an M1 Max. Like, that's just, you can't make this stuff up. Now, I would put a caveat here and say that maybe Apple is pumping more power into these things and that's why their numbers seem to be a little higher than you would expect, but that does not appear to be the case because in all of these charts, they show the power consumption being pretty much the same as what they showed when they displayed the MacBook Pros. Apple is claiming that the M1 Max, which as we can see here is using under 60 watts of power, can compete with an RTX 3060 Ti. But the M1 Max in the MacBook Pro doesn't compete with even a laptop 3060 Ti, so I'm not sure how they're suddenly making this more powerful. And so that makes the big reveal, the graphics comparison of the M1 Ultra, slightly doubtful because in this chart, they're saying that the M1 Ultra at 100 watts of power can compete with an RTX 3090. I mean, realistically, they're saying it's slightly better, but I simply do not think that that is the case. There is absolutely no way that by doubling the GPU cores, they have taken the M1 Max from a 3060 laptop all the way to an RTX 3090 desktop with this new chip. But is it a good value? So to figure that out, we have to talk about the Mac Studio. Apple revealed in their keynote that the Mac Studio starts at $2,000. And for that, you get the binned version of the M1 Max with a 24 core GPU. That honestly was a little bit disappointing to me at first, but then I looked at this overall package, okay? So for $19.99, this is the same price as the 14 inch base model MacBook Pro, but you're getting two additional performance cores for the CPU. You're getting 10 additional GPU cores. You're getting double the RAM at 32 gigabytes and the same 512 gigabytes of storage. Now sure, with the MacBook Pro, you have the benefit of having inputs like a keyboard and a trackpad. You have an output like a display and speakers that you don't get with the Mac Studio. But as a package, I think $2,000 for that M1 Max is a fairly reasonable deal. And I bought that exact base model configuration because we're gonna be putting it through its paces to see how it stacks up for that kind of money. Now, if you want a little bit more than that and you wanna make a very well-rounded Mac Studio, there are a couple of upgrades that I would probably do. And that is, first of all, to go to the M1 Max with the 32 core GPU. That's a $200 upgrade to get eight more GPU cores. I think that is a pretty decent option. I would definitely stick with 32 gigabytes of unified memory because unless you're doing something really crazy, 64 is a little unnecessary. And then I would probably add a terabyte. So for $2,400, I think you'd be getting a really, really solid package here. And that brings us on to the M1 Ultra configuration because, well, there's no other way of putting this. It's twice the price. 
But perhaps that makes sense because it is literally twice everything that we just mentioned. 20 CPU cores instead of 10, 48 GPU cores instead of 24, 32 core neural engine instead of 16, 64 gigabytes of RAM instead of 32, a terabyte instead of half a terabyte. It's twice of everything. But guess what, folks? There is a secret way that you can get an M1 Ultra Mac Studio for a little bit less. If you go into the base model M1 Max one and you upgrade that to the M1 Ultra, but leave it at 64 gigabytes and take it down to 512, you can save $200. So technically you can get the M1 Ultra in a Mac Studio for $37.99 and then just make sure that you have a lot of external storage. So there you go, that's a little pro tip for you. But for most normal people that are willing to spend $4,000 on a Mac, you're gonna want more than half a terabyte of storage. That's almost a ridiculous thing to have to say. But if we go through this upgrade tree, you'll notice that 48 core GPU costs $1,000 to upgrade to the 64. That is a really steep price, but that's the one that I ordered. I said, you know what? We gotta find out the most powerful Mac, how powerful it actually is. So I went ahead and upgraded that. Now, as for the RAM, I'll be honest. I have not yet been able to fully saturate 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And I think very few people will. 99.9% .9 of people should leave it at 64. Now, as for the storage, this is again subjective. If you do eight terabytes, you're looking at a pretty hefty price tag. But if you scale it back to a more realistic four or even two, you're looking at the low to high $5,000 range for this thing with pretty decent specs. Now, I guess we should also mention that when we're talking about this package, it's not actually a complete package because I spent $5,000 on my Mac Studio and I did not get a keyboard, I did not get a mouse, I did not get a display. So what would it actually cost to do this whole thing and, and get all of it? Well, with my particular configuration of $5,000, I added the new Studio display. I have to, you know? So standard glass, of course, I'm not gonna pay for the nano texture, although it is a less expensive upgrade here. It's $300 instead of like 500, which it has been in the past. Uh, for the standard price of $1599, you get basically the same stand as the 24 inch iMac, which I leaked by the way, that was spot on. But you can also add essentially the pro stand for $400. So at least it's not a thousand, but I also said, no thanks, don't need that. So my total came to 6598. But then you gotta add the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and numeric keypad, that's $200. And then you add the Magic Mouse, that's $100. You can also now get Apple Care Plus on a yearly subscription. This is something that I don't think has been around before. So with everything added up here, including the keyboard and mouse to fill out that Apple aesthetic, we're looking at $7,309. And at that point, <laughs> I mean, we can talk about package all we want, but this is darn expensive. Even if you go for the base model $2,000 Mac Studio, it's still $4,000 by the time you've added a display and the magic mouse and keyboard. So it, this is not an inexpensive product, make no mistake. I think the real meta is gonna be, I think the meta here is gonna be using your own accessories and not paying Apple's extremely high prices for the display, keyboard and mouse, but we'll have to see. I hope the display can prove that it's worth $1,600. You can get a lot of monitor for that kind of money. Um, but we're gonna have to wait and find out. I'm really excited to get my hands on all this stuff. It's coming next Friday on March 18th. So you're definitely going to want to be subscribed and turn on notifications because I spent $10,000 for you guys. So you better watch the videos, please. Please watch the videos. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.